Hello, my name is Tamara Wolf and I work as a senior director of programs at the Apparel Impact Institute. Today I will give you a short introduction into AI's work our type of programs, and in particular, we will be looking into our CARM leadership program. As of today, our programs focus around four areas, energy, water, chemistry, and materials. AI is creating partnership to scale proven impact initiatives in those four areas. In energy, the aim is to achieve efficiency and scale up renewable energy solutions with the aim to reduce carbon emissions. In water, we are looking into increased process efficiency and production innovations. In the chemistry area, we are looking into the reduction of the use of hazardous chemicals in production, but also into the increase of ZDHC MRSL compliant chemistry. In materials, we are looking into thoughtful material choices and innovative product design. The Apple Impact Institute's approach towards programs reaches from early stage to solutions to long-term solutions. So while we start very often with a pre-seed, so we are leading or supporting research and innovate solutions, we then go into a pilot phase. Through the collective action working with several brands, we are de-risking those solutions. Once a pilot has proven successful, we are bringing it to the next stage into the model phase and start scaling. So we would eventually go in a new region. Finally, once even the model phase has been successful, we are scaling our programs. Looking forward, those programs will be part of a climate solutions portfolio that we are curating for the industry. We just want to speak also here about decarbonization. The Pearl Impact Institute has done quite significant research in this area and has looked how can the apparel industry decarbonize and what are the most effective interventions for us as an industry to reduce carbon emissions by 45 percent. Firstly, we speak about maximization of material efficiency and scaling preferred materials and practices. A very important topic is the acceleration of next generation materials. Even so, for the Apple Impact Institute, this is an upcoming focus. Very important points that also link very strongly to our carbon leadership program is the maximization of energy efficiency, the elimination of coal, and a shift to 100% renewable electricity. Of course, the implementation of circular business models should not be neglected and is something we all have to keep in mind. Currently, we are offering a range of programs. You can see here our very first program is the Carbon Leadership Program. That is offered for Tier 1 and Tier 2 factories and looks into quite a range of KPIs or target areas. But we are also running other programs like our Clean by Design Energy and Water Efficiency Program or Clean by Design Plus where we really dive deep into energy and water efficiency. We also work on chemistry and wastewater management through a Clean by Design program. In an early stage, we are looking at renewables, crew procurement of renewables, new constructions related to renewables, coal phase out, crew procurement of biomass, and production waste management. Just looking at 2021, the impact of AI has been significant. We have worked with 27 brands and worked with 295 factories in eight regions. You see here an overview of the emission reductions achieved and also what we believe the factories will achieve when, uh, for those factories that have started in 2021. 
So you see here that there is an average saving of 10% in GHG, around 10% in water. And factories who invest around $590,000 actually save around $700,000. That leads to a payback period of nine months. But now let us speak about the Carbon Leadership Program in particular. The Carbon Leadership Program's objective is set to lay the foundation for carbon management in aligning with brand requirements. So firstly, it's an industry-specific but standardized approach to set factory-level carbon targets and low carbon action plans. There is an evaluation of the carbon reduction opportunities and then a preparation of an action plan that really helps facilities to track the performance over time. One-on-one -on -one capacity building on carbon management is a very important aspect of this program. Ultimately, participants in this program will have targets and an action plan to then drive implementation. But how do we do this? Typically, we start with a kickoff event followed by a very easy carbon tech assessment. And I'm saying easy because it's a simple Excel questionnaire that can be filled in around two hours and it includes a one hour engineer to engineer discussion. Once there are the opportunities identified that a factory has, it's taking the next step. And we are diving deep into potential for carbon and water reductions. This will actually lead the way to set the targets and the action plan, but also to define the base year emissions. On the way towards setting these targets and baseline, we are delivering the carbon and water management capacity building. There are two key, key tools that are used. It's the carbon tech assessment tool and the carbon toolkit. But how does that actually work? At the very beginning is this carbon tech assessment. The carbon tech assessment is a very simple questionnaire to be filled. And then it will actually result in an identification of opportunity, but also it will identify the maturity of a facility related to carbon target setting. So we have a type one, that's the least mature, we have the type three, that's the most mature, and then we have something in the middle. The pathways for each of them is a little bit different. And for the least mature factories, we come to, to your facility to actually identify your carbon and water reduction opportunities by also checking the current usage and identifying your baseline emissions. We do the same for type two factories in an online manner, as we can typically build on information you already have available. Most mature factories have done all of that already, and we can just directly go into the capacity building. This capacity building consists of three major workshops that are all mandatory. It's around basic carbon and water management, an introduction to the carbon toolkit and the baseline development, and then how to set target and targets and action plans. There are further trainings depending on the need of facilities. The output from the carbon leadership program as of today is base year emissions, targets and an action plan. So here's just an example how such a carbon tech assessment does look like and which type of information it gives to a factory. So you see the potential for energy, water and carbon saving as an indication. As it's a very simple questionnaire, it is an indication of an opportunity. And only once we do the online assessment, we dive much deeper and can actually quantify even better. This carbon tech assessment tool is available in English and in Mandarin. 
the output then on a brand um, level looks a little bit different. So the brand gets an overview of the overall performance versus the carbon reduction potential of facilities. And also an overview of which of those facilities are type one and type two and three from a maturity level. Also, there will be a summary of the carbon reduction potential. We can provide you more information into the performance scores like the plans and targets, measurements and management process and system controls and boiler performance, but also give you some indication of the countries where there is the biggest carbon reduction potential. Let me just elaborate quickly on the carbon toolkit. This is a tool that is standardized for carbon baseline reporting and it helps you to track the actions of your low carbon action plan. It also includes a carbon target calculator and a reporting tool. From the Carbon Leadership Program, we can actually currently get some insights. So from one of the studies we have done lately, we can here see which type of um, savings are coming from the action plan. So we are having low hanging fruits as well as mid and long term projects, right? So on the immediate payback periods, we have compressed air pressure setting, leakage checking program, increase on time success rate of dying. Less than yet one year, it's boiler efficiency optimization. With a payback period of one to three years, we are looking at heat recovery at boiler and dying processes, thermal insulation for boilers and dying tank, VFD installations for the VD bands then actually increasing the return of investment time from two, three to five years. We are looking at equipment replacement such as low bath ratio dying tank, low MLR laundry machines, on-site solar PV or coal phase out. And then there are also projects with a payback period longer than five years and that could be on-site solar PV or coal phase out. And there are also other examples of course. You can here see from the action plans that we have set with all the facilities to date where the most savings are. So you can actually see that 30% can be achieved through energy efficiency, 10% through on-site solar PV, and around 60% through thermal fuel switch. These aggregated annual saving opportunities give us a very good direction of where to focus efforts on. Having spoken of efforts, of course, the next point is implementation. So the Apollo Impact Institute is offering a range of programs to support implementation. Let it be the Clean by Design Energy and Water Efficiency Program or a Group Procurement Program on Biomass. So thank you so much for listening to me and um, we hope we see you soon on the program. Bye bye.